What's up, guys? I want to give you a quick weekly recap and show you some of the stocks on my watch list for Monday. First, if you don't mind smashing that like button, click and subscribe if you haven't. Also, turning on those post notifications, I'd greatly appreciate it. Now, the first company is Processa PCSA. I've outlined the technical and also fundamental breakdown of why I have interest in the company. And I've also mentioned I've continued to accumulate this stock over the past week. Now, the main thing that stands out to me is the FIB retracements, right? It shows you exactly where demand or support, and then again, where there's some selling pressure or natural supply. So here, um, what's really interesting is we're talking about this 455 level and then also 2844. So again, what's really interesting um, is the 618 and then also the 855 using that as support. We saw um, after this big move, it comes back down, uses this as the floor. Even though it wicks below, it does not close below. We see the bottom 2901. Again, the bottom here, 29, the bottom 281. Um, and then pretty much from there, right, it continues to push up. It did not close below this retracement ever. Um, so that's definitely significant. Um, and then also what's what's interesting to me, I always like to uh, compare and contrast right, how we saw previous resistance to this line here. And then all of a sudden now it breaks out, right? It breaks this uh, line down, comes back down. And now that same line there flip flops. This was resistance. Now this is support. So it's funny how that works. Again, it doesn't matter if it's a 42 cent stock, a $5 stock, a 10, a hundred dollar stock trading options. This all works. Okay. You just have to learn how to identify it, make it very simple. Okay. So again, now let's go back to the top part, right? 45.5 that we saw here. Well, look again, now at using it as resistance. And when we see again, look at the high up here, right? We saw the high 4488, then here 45, and then today 45.2, again, wicking, not closing above. Um, but still, each day consistently over the past, you know, six, seven days here has pretty much been higher highs and higher lows um, on this daily. So definitely interesting, like I said, very strong um, in terms of the way I'm viewing it, right? We have the support there. We have the buyer interest. That's just, again, accumulating, slightly pushing it higher. Um, even though we're seeing the selling pressure um, on the three days, right? It's not really going up exponentially, right? The volume itself is definitely um, a little higher than recently, but compared to when it had that big move, um, it's still not that high, right? Look at this huge spike that we saw before and even... Let's say if we just zoom in on this part here, right, to where we have the the levels before, right, we were still seeing 3 million, 4 million, even when it was coming down. So relative uh, to this, uh, you know, this past, let's say, month or two, if we draw, you know, a line right there, we make this three and a color we could see, right, pretty much going back to where we were here. Let's see, this was 1024. So it's about three and a half, four weeks ago. Uh, pretty much this monthly average has been below uh, a million shares a day. Okay. And the fact that it's trading at 42 cents, right? It's only about, let's say, somewhere between 350 to 500,000 USD a day. And again, the price was probably a little lower than 42 cents, and I'm rounding up to 50 anyway. So it's probably lower than that. Let's say it's, you know, on average, you know, two to 300,000 uh, USD a day here trade. It's really not that much compared to, you know, uh, 7 million, 11 million, 70 million, 10.6. I mean, this is uh, certainly a lot more liquidity and volume here. So that's pretty much what I'm going to be looking for, right? We've drawn a line out. We have an idea of volume when we're starting to really break. Um, I would say anything that's like extremely significant, probably be like above this line here, you know, 1.5, 1.7. This is when the big price action came. So relative to where it was or where we'd like it to see, it's still, again, pretty low. I um, mean, especially for it to still be rising as the selling pressure is going down. I think that might be a sign that bulls are starting to step in and uh, take this thing to the next level. Um, we're in the middle of the gap fill. We closed in it. We didn't close below it. That's definitely a good sign, even though it's a red day. Um, so I'm definitely optimistic here. Another view that I find really interesting is the weekly chart. And um, we see again, right to the top here, four, five, two, four, five, five. Very, very close. Um, three fractions of a penny off from this line. Uh, this will be a big level next week to see. Again, like I mentioned on the more micro chart, 
resistance and to see if this now breaks out and comes in uses this as a floor the same way um you know like we saw uh previously which we just again basically saw in uh this cluster here so i'm looking to see if we're going to do that again i'll uh, just at a higher level here all right uh, so that's pretty much it with PCSA. Uh, the next one would be STAL. Definitely one of the craziest charts I've seen recently. Um, absolutely exploded over the past week. Leave a comment in the section below if you've heard of this stock, Star Alliance. It's been getting a ton of traction on the OTC. I know a lot of people on social media are buzzing about it. Certainly looks like it has a lot more juice left. Just up the past four or five days, it's a 400%. Um, just again, the low of the year to where we are 700%. Um, really, really impressive here. Um, but I want to go on the weekly for a moment. Okay. I have not seen this bullish of a weekly print in quite some time with over 376 million volume. The last time we saw a print this bullish or this aggressive, I think was around a year ago uh, from Tuesday. So this is 11 14 of 2022. And again, that low to high of the week um, was right at about 286%. Now, the main thing here is this 21 EMA. Why is it so significant on the weekly at uh, 0 0.065? I think it's going to smash it, first of all. Um, but second is just looking back, right? When we go year to date, we haven't seen any price action near the 21. The last time was, again, a year ago where it really wicked above. It didn't even close above. Um, this was below. This was one day, but it got ripped all the way down. It was only you know one singular uh, day of the week it closed. And then again, as we go back, right, wick here again, if we zoom in, right, it wicked perfectly. Again, another wick, right, as we're starting to you know, really zoom in and and observe, right? It's it's obvious to see that this is a very uh, strong line here. Okay, so looking at the 21, I want to set uh, two alerts here. One is going to be right at 6.5. So just to make sure, hey, you know, we touched that line. And then again, we're going to set one that's again uh, above 65 here, just so I can get that alert if I'm not paying attention. Um, a lot of people saying news is coming Monday. That's going to be a huge gap up and another very impressive week. Uh, just by the way it's looking, I would say that that has a really good chance of playing out. Um, but now the most important thing to me, at least, is the daily, right? Uh, this volume is crazy, right? We've seen it all the way back, right? Look when we go back and we pull the scale up. There is no volume here, right? This is completely dead. And then all of a sudden, look at this traction, right? This is not for no reason, right? If we zoom all the way out, there has not been volume like this ever, historically, ever. This is crazy. So I'm just trying to make sure that you guys are aware that this is uh, definitely different, right? We haven't seen any sort of explosive uh, buying power or buyer presence uh, like we've seen here. So definitely worth your time to keep on the radar. The only other thing that I would do um, is set... Um, an alert right here as well. Um, we don't need to put it right there um, uh, off the bat if you don't want to, because again, it is uh, pretty far from four cents. But uh, to put a line right here, just so we know where the 200 day EMA is. And again, uh, even more rare to see that try and test uh, the 200 going all the way back. Right. If we were to sort of compress the chart and pull it up, right, there hasn't been much time even on the daily. Um, this is going back two years ago uh, to where it was even closing above this uh, daily 200. So a lot of the heavily weighted moving averages here on the macro are coming all the way down to finally meet the price action. And we know that that has a lot of pressure. So it completely obliterated the 21 and the daily. Same thing on the weekly. Looks like it's about to crush it. Um, if we want to, again, just sort of pull this down and we can get an idea of, you know, what the percentage is uh, from where we are currently. So we're at about 615, we'll just call it 62, all the way up to that 200. That's another 619% uh, upside potential if we get to that line. 
Again, uh, leave a comment. Just let me know what you think. Do we have that much more juice left for ticker STAL? I know it seems to be buzzing all over, but it's not really trending yet on any big site. I think that even though it's up tremendously, we are still a little bit ahead of the curve. So I just want to, again, bring this to your attention. I'm going to take the weekend to do a little bit more research. But again, go back, do your own DD, leave a comment if you're aware of this, if you're involved in it. Any highlights that you want to, again, mention that could be beneficial to our research, let me know below next is going to be splash beverage ticker sbev we mentioned taking a small position with the intention of averaging down at 48 cents so we got 48 and if we go to our support line that would be around 6.7 percent stop loss mentally and if we go again all the way to that chart bottom uh, it's somewhere around 21 percent from where we entered so it's a pretty tight mental stop here in terms of an outline risk to reward one thing that I really like is the management. The ex-CEO of Red Bull is leading the pack here. I love to see that. And then second, there was news released on Friday talking about uh, getting their product or their Vino into one of the biggest retailers, Walmart. Um, and we know how expensive shelf space is and the fight for that with a multitude of different companies and products. So the fact that, you know, all across Southeast America here, Southeast US, they're going to be showcasing their product. I think that's a really great start. That's awesome news. And hopefully will spark some buyer interest. Now, I'm not going to say that I'm looking like super, super long term here, but I would definitely like to see this thing play out. The all time chart highs around twenty seven dollars and even conservatively. Right. If we go back the last year or two, right, the high was almost six dollars. If we just go for this year, for example, right, we go all the way back to March. The stock was one eighty five. All right. So let's see from where we are here. Right from where our average is. Actually, let's just go from where it closed. 50 cents. Let's just be conservative and go all the way to that daily 200. That would be around 88% upside. We go a little higher here. That'd be around 134%. And then let's go all the way back to the high of March, which again was 185. That's around a 270% upside. So if you want to be very conservative with your mental stop loss, or if you, again, want to exit at this support, if it breaks, by all means, that is very, very tight. Six, seven percent is nothing. I would never put a stop loss that tight personally. Um, but again, 20 uh, percent downside for a very conservative 80 to 100 percent. It's again, five to one. So for me, um, I don't mind taking that risk, even if it doesn't work out. Um, again, it's not financial advice. I'm not telling you to buy or sell. None of my videos ever are. But when it comes to Splash Beverage, I do think that this company is extremely undervalued. Again, we are looking forward a little bit on that valuation of where it could potentially uh, become. So again, a little different thought process here, um, but definitely uh, worth your time to take a look to see if that momentum continues to see if we could snap and really get some, like we said, uh, buying pressure, buying volume, and uh, possibly test some old levels. Okay. Last but certainly not least is going to be Koya. I've talked about Koya previously. Um, this was an incredible uh, little sequence that we've seen from the double bottom at 321. Uh, David Einhorn continuing to buy more of this stock, which again is great. Um, I don't really see much turbulence over 561, 575. I think we can melt up right to $8 very quickly. And what was extremely impressive was the weekly chart. I didn't even realize um, I've been following it. This is the all time time high weekly close for Koya Therapeutics. This is very impressive to me personally. Um, never seen this. So it's just a lot of consolidation, right? A lot of fight right at this 618, which is $5. And then it got that break. Now, again, like I said, once it breaks the high here, 565, 570, right? There really isn't any turbulence or anything that's going to prevent this from melting up all the way to $8, right? I even went and looked on the micro frames, which again, they're just pretty much some wicks on the four hour. There really isn't a lot of consolidation or an overwhelming amount of, you know, like you said, resistance, turbulence above this, uh, above this region here. Seems like 561, it holds and closes above. This is just a hotbed to just, you know, go all the way up pending, you know, some good news 
news or again some positive traction that could bring in buying but again koya therapeutics uh, seems like there's going to be a little bit of momentum here going into the end of the year definitely keep it on your radar it looks primed to explode who knows this could be a really nice double up from when we called it out a week or two ago so definitely again keep those on your radar it was supposed to be three stocks i gave you an extra one that's four going into monday let me know in the comment section below are you involved in any of these tickers are you excited going into the end of the year the markets are ripping small caps are going crazy even the otc is popping off so let me know your emotions how you're feeling as a trader in the section below have a fantastic weekend guys and as always we'll see you in the next one